In this first section, we're going to look at the history of air power. First, we're going to talk about the introduction of air power as air power was starting to be introduced with the Wright brothers. Moving on to the Golden Age from 1919 to 1939. Then as we entered World War II, and from there we're going to move on through the Cold War, Desert Storm, and advances in aviation. Everybody's been interested in trying to fly. The desire to fly dates back 4,000 years with uh, China. Emperor Shun escaped from prison by donning uh, the work clothes of a bird. Chinese have always been interested in flight. Uh, legend tells us that Ke Kung, the Chinese god of thunder and lightning, used the wings of a bat. Also, 1800 years before Christ, legend has it that Ke Kung Shi built a flying chariot with no visible means of support. Uh, the Chinese, they were uh, the first to introduce uh, kites, uh, some so big that they can carry a man, and they use these to watch enemy troops. Also, the Chinese invented gunpowder in about 900 AD, and by 1100 AD they were using gunpowder to, to build simple rockets. One legend has it that Wan Hu attempted to fly to the moon using a large wicker chair, which was fastened with uh, 47 large rockets. Uh, when the rockets were ignited, Wan Hu disappeared in a large ball of smoke and fire, never to be seen again. Uh, there's legend that he is the man in the moon. However, uh, watching Mythbusters, uh, this is probably not true. Leonardo da Vinci, he was an artist, architect, man of science. Um, he did a lot of scientific experiments in the field of aviation. He left the world with 160 pages of descriptions and sketches of flying machines and was the first to design a parachute and a working helicopter. And this was called the ornithopters, flying machines that are kept aloft and propelled by flapping wings. It's important to note that Leonardo da Vinci was a brilliant scientist whose work could have changed the entire history of flight except for one tragic fact. It was 300 years after his death before his manuscripts were published and made known to the world. Uh, a lot of folks have went out and uh, created some of the things that Leonardo uh, developed. Leonardo also uh, talked about centers of gravity, uh, streamlining, and other principles. In the late 1500s through the 1700s, there was many stories about flight. Uh, but where it really started to take off is with lighter-than-air type craft, and those were the balloons. In 1783, Montgolfier brothers' first balloon experiment with a sheep, rooster, and a duck. They were successful in uh, putting a balloon up in the air uh, with these various animals on it. In uh, June 5th in the marketplace, they, these uh, brothers built a fire of straw and wood under a balloon. The balloon rose to an altitude of 6,000 feet and traveled over a mile before landing. Montgolfiers had no idea that their balloon rose because it contained heated air that was lighter than the surrounding air. They thought a lighter-than-air gas that was created by the burning fuel caused the balloon's ascent. They called it Montgolfier gas. And it, in September 19th, this is when they uh, went ahead and put their live passengers aboard. November 21st, 1783, this was the first time that humans uh, flew lighter-than-air. So the first human passengers, uh, de Rosier and the Arlans, uh, these two, one was a physician, the other a young infantry officer. This lasted for 25 minutes and flew for more than five miles. Also in 1783, uh, J.A.C. Charles uh, did further research on balloons and he was using a flammable gas isolated by Cavendish 
and this uh, gas he figured out was to be hydrogen and realized that the Montgolfier gas was not as light as hydrogen but they had a problem in containing it so uh, Charles used, created his balloons using a rubberized silk and in, 18, in 1783 his balloon rose with hydrogen and this was witnessed by Benjamin Franklin and Benjamin Franklin realized the military importance of this invention. The first balloon flight in the United States was uh, January 9th in 1793 and this was done in Philadelphia. The pilot who uh, made this first flight in the United States was Jean-Pierre Blancard who had flown across the English Channel President George Washington and thousands of spectators witnessed the flight. The balloon lifted off at 10 o'clock in the morning and landed in Woodbury, New Jersey, 45 minutes later. The first U.S. military use was during the Civil War, and this was used for observation and aerial work. Thaddeus Lowe he was the uh, volunteered uh, balloon services to the Union Army and uh, basically his first attempts to convince General Scott was unsuccessful so he made a plea to the president to tell him about the advantages of aerial observation what he did is he launched a balloon uh, attached a telegraph wire to it and was able to send Morse code telling uh, describing various scenes to the president uh, President Lincoln uh, then directed General Scott to seriously consider Lowe's offer. Lowe was uh, then allowed to create the balloon signal service under the Union Army and him and another, a couple other Army aeronauts served in the Balloon Corps for the first two years of the war. The aerial observers had some frustrating experience. They had to struggle to get their salary, supplies, and ground and maintenance crews. They also had to get permission to make aerial ascents. Uh, the balloon corps was disbanded for lack of manpower and money for upkeep. The South was well, well aware of the balloon services to the Union and wanted to start a Confederate balloon force. They made the first balloons of varnish, polished cotton, and raised it with heated air over a fire of turpentine and pine, night, uh, pine knots. The second Confederate balloon had to be made from silk dresses donated by Southern women. Each day the crew filled this patchwork balloon at the Richmond, Virginia gas plant. They took it by rail to the battle lines east of the city. Once they mounted the balloon on the James River steamer, the steamer ran aground. When the Union troops spotted the vessel, they captured the balloon and edited the, ended the Confederate hopes for a balloon corps. The next uh, advances in ballooning came in the form of gas. The use of hydrogen gas overcame the major disadvantage of the hot air balloon. And this was a big improvement.